My name is Kavin, and I'll be your host for this session, together with two other colleagues, uh, the OICO Credit Director of Africa, Hans Perk, and the Manager of Communications, Ulrika Haug. All right, now I'd like to hand over to, to Director of Africa, Hans Perk, from OICO Credit, for a word of welcome. Thank you, Kavin, and um, welcome to all on this, uh, on this webinar. It's great to see that we have so many partners joining from West Africa, from East Africa, all the way to the Philippines. Uh, colleagues joining in these very unusual times, um, which were confronted with this crisis, which is called COVID. As Oracle Credit, we're here to support our partners in, in of course, different ways, providing finance. Uh, we keep on doing that. Um, and at the same time, we also would like to see how we can further support our partners for organizing webinars on stress testing, on business continuity planning. And we're also organizing, starting organizing today, uh, kicking off informal sessions, as Kawin called it. We called it internally, we call it the coffee sessions to hear from the leaders on how they are um, yeah, approaching this crisis, how they're steering their organizations through this crisis. And hopefully we can provide in this way a platform to see how we can exchange information and learn from each other. After being welcomed to all of you, I would very much like to welcome Dr. Godwin Eikia Musu, uh, who has taken up the challenge to be the first one, uh, you could say the guinea pig, uh, trying out this, uh, this new form for us to exchange and learn from each other. And Dr. Godwin is an uh, acknowledged microfinance practitioner, which uh, has a long standing history in finance uh, since the 80s where uh, in 1987, he founded Lift Above Poverty Organization, LAPO, as an NGO. Um, he has studied at uh, the Lagos Business School uh, at INSAT, um, and he has a PhD uh, in development studies from the Ambrose Ely University in the Edo State. Um, LAPO, uh, familiar by many of you, is a microfinance bank, a pro-poor financial institution, and um, yeah, it started, as I said already, as a non-governmental organization and um, obtained the Central Bank of Nigeria's license in 2010 and is now operating as a state microfinance bank uh, and became licensed as a national microfinance bank in September 2012, operating in 34 states in Nigeria. LAPO is committed, as we know it, as Oracle Credit, to the social health and economic empowerment of the poor and the vulnerable of Nigeria, and uh, over 90%, if I'm not mistaken, of the borrowers uh, and the clients of LAPO are women. Uh, the, the organization has uh, demonstrated uncommon commitment to poverty alleviation in Nigeria and uh, the implementation of innovative credit and non-credit empowerment programs. I'm very pleased, um, um, Dr. Godwin, to, uh, to give you the word as our first coffee session, um, yeah, steering organizations through the COVID crisis. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for the kind uh, introduction and also giving me the opportunity uh, to be a part of this, especially being a pig, uh, guinea pig of this. Um, I want to begin by saying that this is a crisis that is like no other. Um, it, it is something that uh, no, not many institutions anticipated, and therefore the impact has been uh, devastating. The impact has been quite challenging. I, I will look at I will look at the impact of the crisis from two perspectives. The first one is uh, how does it itself affect our uh, our organization, um, our clients, our staff, our operations, and secondly, also um, look at what the government or government agencies like the regulatory authorities are doing and how we are responding uh, to that. Uh, the first, we as an organization, uh, when the crisis uh, started about a month ago in Nigeria, we came out with what we regarded we regard as our response plan, and that plan has uh, major three objectives. The first objective 
was deliberate was to see how we can uh, protect our clients and our staff from infection. The second objective was how we could handle the obvious destruction uh, it brings to our operation. And the third one was um, related. How would we, if eventually it comes to lockdown that we have today, how do we ensure that we mitigate the impact on, of that on our operation and on our, our clients? Um, the impact on us as an organization for our clients, um, we uh, look at the, uh, before I go into that, I quickly just give you a background of what the situation in Nigeria. Uh, as of yesterday, we have had uh, 200 and 38 confirmed cases. Uh, we know that we do have some challenges in testing, and the number of deaths uh, as of yesterday is uh, five. So, what therefore, um, in terms of the impact, the first was our customer, the, the impact on our customer. Uh, the reality now is that their business activities has gone down, the volume of their business activity, inability to engage in their businesses, because the part of the lockdown guidelines is that only business people, uh, in, in our, our clients inclusive, that are engaged in food, that is food items, and medical, um, medical, uh, products are allowed to open their shop for business. The implication, therefore, is that a large number of their businesses have uh, gone down. The, the second thing is the fact that we also fear that that obviously has effect on our operations. We also fear that um, infection because the test nature of our transaction, especially at the credit meetings, made for easy spread of infection, possible easy spread of infection. And the way we have responded to that simply was to take a very tough decision. And that is, we suspended all our credit union meetings. And that also means that we suspended repayments okay, uh, for, for our clients. For our staff, um, obviously, we also wanted to protect them, like I said. And we equally, as we have suspended our, our, um, our group meetings, most of the fee staff, obviously, are out of work at the moment. And then some others at the head office and regional offices are working from home. On our, um, the, the impact on our credit risk, uh, I think this is quite obvious that um, when the meetings are not holding, repayments obviously are not being made. Uh, I think this is the big challenge for almost all lending institutions. So how do we deal with that? Um, what we simply did was that again related to the suspension of our group meetings we equally i have noted before suspended uh recollection um what we we went to our core banking the uh, credit management system to so simply just uh, pause for first for the first two weeks uh, that by application is that we have extended the tenure of our loan and we have rescheduled all our loans uh, to take care of that. For operational risk, this is where we've actually had a big hit. Um, fortunately or fortunately, we are currently implementing a new core banking uh, software. And we had the implementing team coming together to do this, uh, visiting some branches in order to do that. That has been, you know, that has also been affected. Uh, on what the government um, agencies are doing, um, 
first is the fact that there's a lockdown in some states. And in some other states, out of the 36 states, uh, they, you have lockdown in two states and the Federal Capital Territory. Some other states are also in partial lockdown. Um, that has had some impact on us. In addition to, to that, I think in other countries as well, the government and government agencies are also concerned about the financial stability as well as also um, providing um, uh, support for their people, especially people at the bottom of the, of the, of the society, which are where are the bulk of our clients uh, belong to. This is tough. Um, we, 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 we have a very, um, a very a good structure that you know, gets down from the head office to the zona, to the area, and then to the branches. Uh, we, we engage them. We engage them uh, by, you know, dialogue, and they do also understand the situation we are. Uh, we, we find ourselves as a, a nation, and therefore, uh, they do not need, you know, uh, what I would consider as huge uh, uh, motivation at, at this point to be able to uh, stay motivated in, in, in the organization. But what we are thinking, we are working on, with the training institute, we have a training institute. We think that we they are coming up with series of online uh, because they have e-learning platform that they can use to engage um, uh, at this period, doing a lot of training, uh, conducted training program for, for our staff, especially the free staff. But for the head of free staff, um, majority of us are still engaged. We are working from home. We still hold our regular meetings, our management meetings. We still hold our precious meeting online. So for us, for us at the head office, we are sufficiently engaged. Ways I will look at it. The first thing is to say again that uh, we realize the danger, and it is for that reason that we suspended all our group, uh, our operations. I think the lesson that will come out of this, and for us, our risk management team knew this some years ago, should be able to balance um, what segments, you know, what proportion of their business will still be on group methodology and what should be on um, individual. It, it is for that reason that at that point we took that decision. Uh, to do that. It could be quite challenging for institutions that have been used to have competencies in group methodology to begin to do individual. It needs a lot of training investment or in training as we did to be able to do that. Like I said, I think post this crisis, uh, there's going to be a massive rethinking of the way we do things, including the way we run our businesses. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Godwin. With that, I would like to, to thank Godwin again and ask him, you know, to close the session, um, what would you say at this very moment are the three priorities that a financial leader in inclusive finance should have at this very moment? Uh, this, is, this is tough, but um, for me, I think the first thing should be about concern about lives and businesses and welfare of our customers. Um, yeah, it is conventional saying that they are the essence of our doing our business. So we must uh, do whatever we could do uh, to be more concerned about their lives. Um, information, taking a lot, a lot of information to massive handbills, even radio, uh, radio announcements as we have done in LAPO and also what I call the, uh, the client court, calls, calling the clients. The second thing is um, 
the reality is that the government and regulatory agencies are going to do everything to respond to this crisis. And they tend to focus on the bottom of the pyramid, which is our, our target. And so the regulatory response or responses should be our concern. Uh, how do we monitor them? How do we respond to the last number two? Number three, I alluded to that earlier, is the fact that leaders of institutions as ours should be ready and concerned and get ready for post-COVID recovery. After the crisis, I think there are going to be consequences that we need to manage.